Before we start in 1988, we see a boat on the India-Bangladesh nautical border. We then see Sarda, an undercover spy, having the Indian National Security Advisor at gunpoint. We also see a very concerned and sad Noble Highness Rato, who is the mentor of Sarda. Sardar shoots the advisor. The seat shift to the present day where we see a politician discussing with his digital marketing team about starting a YouTube channel to promote his campaign. But instead they decide to invoke riots among the civilians who are protesting peacefully and make it a trend on social media by degrading the police. The police receive an intelligence report regarding this shady scheme. The police try to calm the situation but the rioters call the police in filth and keep damaging public property. We then see Vijay, the inspector of the area, enter the seat to calm the riot. Still, the rioters seem to continue their evil ways. Vijay then brings a water tank to disperse them. The rioters seem to stand their ground. But to their surprise, the tank didn't contain water. It had petroleum inside. Everyone runs away in fear and Vijay starts to trend in social media. The next scene shifts to the Netherlands in the International Court of Justice regarding an illegal dams dispute between India and China on who will efficiently use the water from the Brahmaputra River. We see an older Rato who now runs a company named Oasis. He presents his vision, One India, One Pipeline. The plan consists of interconnecting all of India's water resources into one and distributing it throughout the country, claiming Oasis will be the leader in water management. The court declares China to sign a new treaty with India. We then see a man in a wheelchair called Victor. He contacts an agent, Cockroach. We then see the evil plan of Oasis to hoard water for themselves and sell it for money to make a massive profit. It's also revealed Cockroach is planning to bring Sardar out using the code red plan. In the next seat, we see Shalini, a beautiful lawyer. Really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. <coughs> it's revealed Vijay has a crush on Shalini and he tried to propose to Shalini three times and failed. But Shalini was well aware of everything. We get to know Vijay is the son of the traitor Sardar and getting deemed in by the high officers. We also see Vijay's child where his whole family suicide after his father went home. Vijay's uncle consoles him, asking him to cheer up. We see Shalini trying to argue against the One India One Pipeline project in court. Samira, an activist trying to stop Oasis, meets up with Victor and gets a note. Samira and Shalini protest against Oasis in front of the court. Vijay arrives and sets up jammers and lets them protest peacefully in a corner. He then gets an order to disperse the protesters and Samira seems to have wood on her hand. She gets inside the bus. Vijay confronts Shalini about whether she likes him. She says him that he is too self-conscious about what others say about his dad. Vijay then explains the hardships he went through about his father going rogue and says Shalini is the same as others and doesn't understand it. We then see that a file has got missing in the court, which has a secret tunnel under it, where all the research and link analysis, aka raw documents, are kept. The court read later has been stolen. Vijay goes to the photographer's office to find out any suspicious activity. He notices Samira leaving when the jammers were on and comes back with a bruise on her hand. He pulls out an AVP to find her, then proceeds to her house. He sees Timothy, Samira's son, who is willing to open the door, so he forces his way inside. He goes to Samira's house and accesses her laptop. Using Timothy's watch, Vijay tries to track Samira down. Vijay goes to a cake shop where Samira ordered a hamper for Timothy. Samira ditched the watch in the mill and escaped. Vijay gets to know one of Samira's spread lives in the area and he goes to visit him. He is Timothy's doctor. Timothy is terminally ill with sarcoidosis with a lifespan of 4 to 5 years. The cause of this disease is when plastic water bottles get heated in the sun, the chemical BPA in the bottle mixes with the water. He also gets to know Samira tried to sue Oasis, the leader in the market of bottled water. Vijay gets the news that Samira has been found dead on the beach. The police blame Samira as a traitor who stole classified documents and she was cornered by the police. So in fear, she committed suicide. Vijay sees the same fairy Timothy from his childhood and takes him away. Timothy along with Vijay decides to post a letter to his grandfather. Vijay says that there's a conspiracy behind the whole scheme as Samira is not a traitor and she was fighting for a noble cause. Vijay gets the autopsy report and confirms that Samira was murdered. He starts to investigate along with his uncle. After interrogating a local water supplier, they find out a distributor that despite Samira could have abducted her. Vijay goes to the place and beats up a few goons. The goons reveal that a few men brought Samira into the water plant and tortured her to find out about the classified file, killing her in the process. Vijay goes to Samira's laptop and sees a video that shows the devastating effect of the plan of Oasis. Oasis is a water mafia, and the One India One Pipeline mission will bring a scarcity of water in the future. Shalini investigates Samira's house and finds she had blueprints for the raw locust who is also joined by Vijay. The duo sees the note given to Samira by Victor. We also see Victor and Cockroach discussing where the red letter is. Vijay realizes that the red letter Timothy posted through Samira's order was meant for Sangar, who is being held as a prisoner in Chittagong prison in Bangladesh. A riot is breaking out in the prison and the guards are brutally attacked by the prisoners. 
we see an old sarbar coming out of his cell, beating up a few prisoners in a cold and deadly manner to send the prison guards. The remaining prisoners run back to their cells in fear after seeing him. Cockroach says to Victor, the only thing that can bring Sardar out is the red light. The scene shifts to Rato, who demolishes his ancestor's statue, also orders a hitman to take out Cockroach. We see Charlini and Vijay waiting in the train station to meet Cockroach. Cockroach spots Charlini and starts running, who is chased by Vijay. Rato's hitman pushes a few boxes on the cockroach and he falls onto the oncoming train to his death. Vijay takes cockroach's bag to the office and tries to decipher his last location through the sims used by him. The prison guards go through the prisoner's letters and opens the red letter. The warden of the prison contacts the Indian embassy to reveal they received code red. An agent of Raw says the warden is coming over to question Sardar and not give the red letter to him. Rato gets the information as well. He schemes to kill Sardar by asking the end of Raw to tell the warden to kill Sardar. The guard takes Sardar out to execute him. The guard who was saved by Sardar in the riot shows him the code red letter. Sardar escapes the execution and beats up the guards. He escapes the prison by diving into the water. Vijay tracks Cockroach's bunker and enters it. As he tries to investigate, Rathor's hitman tries to kill him. The hitman sets the bunker on flames and leaves. But Vijay somehow escapes with Sardar's fine written by Cockroach. The scene goes back to 1983. The Pakistan army is planning to poison the Wular Lake that flows into India. We see Victor explaining the situation to the general. We also see a young Rato, who is a noble, insisting that they need Pakistan's strategy before sending the troops. So Rato tells the general he will send his top spy Sardar to the camp and get all the details of the commands. Rato gives Sardar the order to infiltrate the camp. Sardar pretends to be a shepherd who got caught in a bomb blast and gets into the camp. He attacks the medics and disguises himself as a Pakistan soldier. Sardar opens the letter and reads the commands, thus leaving the tent. But the general realizes the seal is broken and searches for the imposter. The army tries to sketch the imposter, but Sardar disguised himself as the artist. He then steals the typewriter through which the orders were typed and decodes the information by reading the ink pad in it. The information is then revealed to Rato. We see Sardar's father demeaning him by saying he is doing nothing useful in his life, unlike his brother who are in the army. Sardar's actual name is Bose, and we see him being recruited as a spy by the raw agents. Sardar gets a call from Rathor to get a mission debriefing, but Inja, the girl who likes Sardar, keeps nagging him. He meets Rathor and Victor to reveal intel that the plan was executed by Pakistan but ordered by China. To get more information, Sardar is ordered to meet Cockroach. His revealed China is planning a mission called One Nation, One Pipeline in India. Doesn't it seem similar to Rathor's plan in the future? You will know shortly. Sardar wonders how can China invade India and do this. It's revealed that there is an inside agent in India called Laughing Buddha helping the Chinese. Sardar gives the details to Rathor, which is overheard by Indra. Indra confronts Sardar and thinks he's a terrorist. Sardar says he's an undercover agent and needs to keep it a secret. They both decide to marry each other after Sardar expresses his feelings to her. Sardar is Kanto Abraham, the national security advisor, and tries to find more clues that he is the Laughing Buddha. Abram confronts Rathor, stating that he knows they are planning to find the Laughing Buddha. He then offers Rathor half a million dollars to stop the investigation. Sardar reveals to Rathor that he has evidence against Abram and that the water project is worth $120 million. Rathor, who is overcome by greed, manipulates Sardar to kill Abram and takes the blame as a traitor to save the country. Rathor assures that he will prove Abram is the traitor and send a court bread once done. Until that, Sardar should be hidden from India. Sardar infiltrates the office and abducts Abram. He kills him on the boat and escapes. Meanwhile, Sardar's family comes to know that he became a traitor and the whole family is seen dead in a well after committing suicide. Rathor takes the documents from Sardar's hut and resigns from his post as a government official and becomes the new laughing Buddha. Sardar was captured by the Bangladesh Coast Guards and imprisoned. The scene shifts to the present where Sardar gets to know the truth of the current world. He decides to stop Rathor and the Oasis project. Rathor comes to the raw agency and makes everyone work towards finding Sardar. Vijay's uncle handcuffs Vijay and hands him over to the police, framing him for sending the red letter to Sardar. Vijay asks Shalini to go to Victor's house. The raw plans on securing Victor to find out if he was a raw agent. Rathor sees Victor's image and decides to kill him. The hitman tries to kill Victor, but is stopped by Timothy. The raw agent releases Vijay's handcuffs and demands him to bring his dad Sardar to him. The officials bring Victor into the building and Vijay asks for five minutes to talk to him to find out where Sardar is. The agent agrees. Shalini goes to Victor's house and finds Rathor's hitman beaten and dead while Victor is sleeping in bed. The officials who think Victor is the person in the wheelchair scans his fingerprint but to their surprise it was Sardar. Sardar saved Timothy and Victor by killing the hitman. He beats up the officials and opens the vault with the agent's fingerprint to head inside to get Little Brother, a small film role that has all the evidence to prove his innocence. The SWAT team tries to stop him but he beats them up. Rathor locks Sardar inside the vault and comes to have a chat with him. He reveals that he went to retrieve the documents from his house, but his wife Indra overheard their conversation. 
Indra asks Ratho to send the red letter and bring him. Afridi's plan will be disrupted by Sardar's wife. He chokes and kills her. Ratho kills Sardar's whole family and frames it as suicide. Vijay overhears everything and gets so heartbroken. Sardar gets furious and states he came back to destroy his pipeline dream. He makes an explosion on the floor and hijacks the truck that contains plutonium. Vijay also escapes and meets his uncle who lets him escape the place. His uncle apologizes and they come to an understanding. Sardar's truck doesn't have plutonium, it only contains sodium. Rathor tries to reveal this truth but the raw agency doesn't believe him. They are hesitant to stop the truck fearing it might explode. Rathor then figures out Sardar's plan which is to dump the sodium into the pipeline base by making it explode. Vijay uses Samira's watch to track where Timothy is. Sardar crashes the truck on top of the hatch where the water dam is built. He leaves Timothy on top and warns him to leave if the dam opens. Rato sends some goons to stop Sardar, but he stops them by electrocuting them in the tunnel. Rato orders his manager to open the pipes and release the water so the water flows into 300 villages and if Sardar opens the hatch, the explosion of sodium in the water will blast the villages as well. Timothy overhears this and says Vijay the news who is now going to help his father. Vijay enters the place and beats up the goons in the basement. While Sardar beats up the goons near the office, the manager somehow opens the valve and destroys the controls. The water starts to flow into the pipe. Vijay outpowers the manager and falls on top of the valve. Rathor holds Sardar at gunpoint and says if he opens the hatch and lets the sodium in, all the villages will blast as well. Vijay regains consciousness and he uses gas pressure to close the valve. Sardar breaks Rathor's leg while getting shot in the shoulder. He then proceeds to open the hatch. Timothy tells Vijay they have to get away from the blast radius and they run away. Rathor is left to die in the explosion along with the dam. Sardar and Vijay meet face to face for the first time and bond. Vijay asks his father to hand over little brother, but Sardar says if the people get to know Rathor was a double agent, they will lose hope in the government. So he decides to take the blame on himself and leaves. We see Sardar going somewhere on a boat. The movie ends with the raw agent firing Vijay from the police and recruiting him as a spy. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, subscribe to help the channel out and get more content like this. Take care and peace.